Ah, well, it's a lovely day here in Tari. I'm looking out the window again. Um, but how do we know it's a lovely day? Um, well, I could, I won't turn the camera around to show you because I'll probably never get it pointing back again. But I can tell you the sun's shining, it's a blue sky. I could go and measure the temperature. It's probably not that warm because it's not early in the year. Um, but there's a number of me uh, metrics or measures I could use. Um, or perhaps I should go out and talk to people and uh, see you know, if there's people sitting out and saying how lovely it is or whether they're all huddled inside. Um, now, for me, this sunny day seems like a good day. But last week, uh, there was the, it was the Tyree Wave Classic and there was people windsurfing. The best day for them was not a sunny day. It was actually quite a dull day, quite a cold day. But it was the day with the best wind. They didn't care about the sun, they cared about the wind. So if I'd asked them, I might have got a very different answer than if, if I'd asked a different visitor to the island or if, I'd, if you'd asked me about it. And it can be almost a conflict between people with an HCI. It's between those who are more quantitative. So when I was talking about the sunny day, I could go and measure the temperature. I could measure the wind speed if I was a surfer. A whole lot of numbers about it. Uh, opposed to, as opposed to those who want to take a more qualitative approach. So instead of uh, measuring the temperature, those are people who want to talk to people to find out more about what it means to be a good day. And um, we could do the same for interface. I can look at a phone and say, okay, how long does it take me to make a phone call? Or I could ask somebody whether they're happy with it. What does the phone make them feel about? Um, different kinds of questions to ask. You can also, you might ask those questions, and you can ask this in both qualitative quantitative way in a sealed setting. You might take somebody into a room, give them perhaps a new interface to play with. So you might so take the computer, you know, give them a set of tasks to do and see how long they take to do it. Or what you might do is go out and watch people in their real lives using some piece of, it might be existing software, it might be new software, or just actually observing how they do things. Um, there's a bit of overlap here, I should have mentioned at the beginning, between evaluation techniques and empirical studies. Um, and you might do empirical studies very, very early on, and they share a lot of features with evaluation. Um, they are much more likely to be wild studies. And there's advantages to each. In a laboratory situation, when you've brought people in, you can control what they're doing, you, you can guide them in particular ways. However, that tends to make it um, both more sort of, say, robust that you know what's going on, but less about the real situation. In the real world, it's uh, what people often call ecologically valid. It's about what they really are up to. Um, but as it is much less controlled, harder to measure, all sorts of things. Um, very often, I mean, it's rare or it's rarer to find more quantitative in the wild side, but you can find both. You can both go out and perhaps um, do a measure of people outside. You might. Um, you know, go, well, go out on a Sunday day and see how many people are smiling. Count the number of smiling people each day and use that as your measure. A very quantitative measure that's in the wild. More often you might in the wild just go and ask people and some more qualitative things. Similarly in the lab, you might do a quantitative thing, some sort of measurement, or you might ask something more qualitative, more open-ended. Particularly quantitative and qualitative methods, which are often seen as um, very, very different and people will tend to focus on one or the other. Personally, I find they fit together. Uh, quantitative uh, methods tend to tell me whether something happens and, and how common it is to happen, whether it's something I expect to see in practice commonly. Qualitative methods, the ones which are more about asking people open-ended questions, either to both tell me new things that I didn't think about before, um, but also give me the why answers, if I'm trying to understand why it is I'm seeing a phenomenon. So the qualitative things, the measurements say, yeah, there's something happening, people are finding this feature difficult. The qualitative thing helps me understand what it is about it that's difficult and helps me to solve it. So I find they give you complementary things, they work together. Um, the other thing you have to think about when choosing methods is about what's appropriate for the particular situation. And these things don't always work. Sometimes you can't do an in-the-wild experiment. Um, if it's about, for instance, systems for people in outer space, you, oh, you're going to have to do it in a laboratory. You're not going to um, go up there and uh, experiment while people are flying around the planet. So sometimes you can't do one thing or the other. It doesn't make sense. Um, similarly with users, if you're designing something for chief executives of Fortune 100 companies, 
you're not going to get 20 of them in a room uh, and do a, a user study with them. That's not practical. So you have to understand what's practical, what's reasonable, and choose your methods accordingly.